right. Well, we're talking today to Lily Winwood. I was going to say this is this might be the first time I've talked to the offspring of uh, an artist I grew up listening to on the radio and watching music videos. And of course, artist in your own right. You have an album coming out. Time well spent coming two weeks from today. Correct me if I'm wrong. Two weeks from today. And boy, am I ready. <laughs> this, okay, the, okay. This is obviously not your first recorded output. You, you had the EP a few years ago. And I was watching some of the videos that you know, performances that, that you've had and some the interviews that you've, you've done. Were they, correct me if I'm wrong, but these songs were recorded a little bit ago. It's not like you just wrapped this up, that these have kind of been in the hopper for a little bit, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. Right, they've been mixed and mastered and done since about June, 2019. So I've been sitting on them for a minute. Oh boy, what what was the what was the um, delay, if I may ask for, and, and not necessarily delay. Maybe that was the plan, but but why the about an, a year and a half between the recordings and the mastering and everything, and coming out with the final project. Um, well, being kind of, um, I'd say new per se to the music scene, and like this being my first, you know, my debut album, um, I wanted to make sure I had the perfect plan for releasing this and I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to release it independently or kind of shop it around and you know after some some sort of trial and errors I just came to releasing it through CD Baby and I'm really happy and really excited. The uh, so. I've been listening to the, the songs that have the kind of the preview tracks on YouTube. By the way, where did you record those out in the out in the open and how did you get that reverberation sound going? I mean, it sounds like it's a studio, but you're sitting outside right next to a smoldering fire. It's so bucolic. I really I really liked it. How did you guys do that? Thank you. It was just in my backyard. Um, and honestly, it it took a few tries to kind of get the videos to where there wasn't like an airplane or just birds or like a dog barking. So it definitely took the whole day to record all of the songs. And we just had like a little mic that we ran through um, this interface into our computer and it just sounded really great. So yeah, um, you could, that being said, like, in the recordings, you can definitely hear some background noise that was pretty unavoidable. Yeah, there was one point where I heard a jet going overhead where I went, okay, this really is like you're outside just hanging out and well, okay, I guess that's there, but it, it doesn't interfere with it. Like I said, it sounds like it's in a studio. I'm curious, how similar are those versions compared to what we're going to hear on the actual recorded output on, on the actual album? They're pretty different. Um, I mean, they're definitely similar, like, in terms of, like, you know, chords and the way, like, I don't know, the melody of the song is, but um, the the record has a lot more of a fuller band vibe. I wanted these videos to be very stripped down and acoustic to kind of um, more or less, like, let listeners get a sense of like what the song is about and kind of get more familiar with the lyrics of the song um just more of like an introduction i'm i was sensing somewhat of a lyrical theme in these songs but but obviously don't want to judge or evaluate until you hear the whole project and, and hearing all of that was there any sort of particular theme for the time well spent songs as opposed to your prior writings woman on silver stage um no um a lot of these songs uh have been written over the course of like five years and um i think i'd say if there was any sort of underlying theme it would be coming of age um there's a lot of talk about like heartbreak um running away um you know, kind of coming to terms with things that you may or may not have been to terms with in the past. And um, and then the song, the record sums up uh, at the very end, the 11 track on the album's called You'll Know Where to Find Me. And that kind of talks about how I've like 
retired, you know, my my adolescent ways, if you will. So I think, yeah, if there's any sort of underlying theme, it would be sort of like travel and coming of age and sort of crossing the threshold and coming back to the beginning, having learned a lot. Right. Um, how do you write songs? What's the, what's the process of coming up with lyrics or music in order? How does that all go? Oh man, it's, I have, I have no, <laughs> specific process I have no um yeah it, it, songs could sometimes take me five minutes to write songs could sometimes take me two years um but it all starts with an idea whether it be like a melody or a lyric and then sometimes I'll just get flowing um and get really into it or it'll be something that I have to kind of perfect and it'll take me a while to come back to the song and go through it and maybe add a different melody or um, different lyrics. So there really is no specific process for me. How many songs have you written in your life? Uncountable. <laughs> uh, too many. <laughs> yeah, I remember talking to um, CJ Solar um, country artist and he was he happened to be here in Eau Claire Wisconsin because we have a, a country station in my building I mean literally out the window where I'm pointing is our is our big country station he happened to be by and I just happened to interview him his main thing is songwriting and he said like oh I've written like 2,000 songs I'm like wow that's that's a lot but I mean I, I have to imagine it's kind of if, if you're a songwriter that's kind of more par for the course that they're going to keep piling up and piling up so how do you determine the right ones to release to well, literally to the public. I think it's definitely up to the artist. Um, I know for me that I had certain piles of songs that I would play in public. Um, and I guess I sort of chose what um, got the best reception um, as well as sitting down with my producer for this record and playing him uh, the few songs that I thought were good and then kind of sitting down and talking with him what we thought would fit and then again like yeah come, seeing what might all go under one umbrella in terms of theme um so there's a lot of factors that come into deciding what goes onto a record um, what what are some of the things you have learned about the craft of songwriting and arranging as you as you've gone through this process of putting together a commercial album release and i mean that that's a pretty big thing to, to finally do that and get it to the point where it's getting interviews across the country what and performing around the country what what have you learned like what, what are some tips that, that you get as it goes along as, for someone being relatively earlier in their career i'm fascinated by how this process is developing yeah um i think one thing that I've learned is that things aren't always gonna be perfect. Um, things aren't always necessarily gonna fall into place that the way that you want them to, but um, as long as you try your best and at the end of the day, as long as you are happy with the product that you are selling to people and happy with the songs, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. There's two states uh, among among the songs thus far, California and Indiana. Why those states in particular? Um, what 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 drew you to come up with the storylines that led to led to those? Right. Um, so I had been doing a lot of traveling. I've been touring since I was 16 years old, um, and I actually <laughs> I have a number of songs that are named after states because I think I. I sort of picture times in my life and relate certain stories to certain areas, um, and particularly California and Indiana, those states um, I have a lot of history with. And um, if you listen to those songs a bit deeper, um, California, I have a very sort of positive experience with. Indiana, I have a sort of very negative experience with. Um, and yeah, I think just those states in particular, uh, particular I've um, kind of been back and forth with and had um, a stronger story to talk about. A few more records 
essentially the promoted single. It's got the video out as of a few weeks ago. Like the video, um, why did that one in particular warrant getting kind of the promotional push? What was that? What was it? You was it? Was was it someone else that said, "Hey, promote this one first off"? I mean, it's catchy as heck. I, it's, it, like I said, I like the video. What made that one be the standout come album release time? Yeah. Um, so a few more records honestly really stood out to me as a single on the record just because of its sort of upbeat feel and I think it kind of really gets people's toes tapping and I think if a listener were to like that song then they might kind of want to delve in see what else we've got going on so I, I think it's a very enticing song so, so. there's a one there's a one point in the video where camera set across from the pathway you're sitting I think I saw a few people just walking by was that literally like people just kind of doing their thing walking by and they ended up in a music video without realizing it yep <laughs> <laughs> literally exactly. just um, yeah. we filmed it down at Shelby Bottoms it's just a it's a city park uh, right down here in East Nashville um, and Stacy Huckabee who um, produced it and filmed it she you know I'd be sat there kind of mouthing the words and it was so awkward to me <laughs> uh, like pretending to sing in front of all these strangers and she was just like no go on and she she made me feel really comfortable about it and I think people were walking by and they didn't know whether to like stay back or whether to get in the shot or not so she she was really good at letting people know like no it's fine the more people the better come on by so yeah it's a nice effect in 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 there ultimately i mean it it, I, it almost reminded me of a, of a pathway here in western wisconsin i'm like oh yeah i totally could have seen just shooting a music video there but i mean i that I've always wondered about that when I see videos from other artists and they shoot it out in public, they're walking down the street like, are these people extras or do they realize what they're going into here? It's yeah. going to end up on, well, I mean, in the old days would be MTV, nowadays would be YouTube, but really that's, it's slice of life and that's just kind of what happens and you got to lip sync your way through it. Right. <laughs> totally. Yeah. What, what is, okay, I'm going to ask the, 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 one of the tougher questions to ask an artist when they have a new album come out because all the songs are ostensibly your babies. So which one's your favorite? It changes every day. <laughs> a lot of them I'm kind of teetering on getting sick of because I <laughs> haven't sat on these songs for so long, but I'd say right now, um, One Big Sky is um, my favorite. I think it, it, it's a very good uh, summary of the song. I'm also just like really, um, summary of the record, but I'm also just really happy with like the production on that particular song um, and the instrumentation. Speaking of instrumentation, who are the instrumentalists on the on this uh, project? Give us a little bit of a intro on who we're gonna hear and how you hooked up with them to be on this project. Oh my gosh. Uh, I like could not be more proud of this band. It's like my my dream band. Um, so on drums you have John Radford. On guitars you have Laura Helmets, and then you have Robbie Crowell on keys and actually saxophone. He plays saxophone on um, one of the tracks, Nameless. And then you have Joe Andrews on pedal steel and mandolin and kind of doing some utility stuff. And then you have Larissa Maestro on cello. And then you have um, Alex Munoz who helped produce the record also just doing like a few guitar -y bits. And they're all just like such fantastic players. Oh, and Kevin Black on bass. Um, but yeah, I could not be more happy with how it turned out. I was always so nervous to be in a room with all of them, but that is awesome. So how, how do you find that those particular ones being in, a, I mean, Nashville's, obviously it's the reputation as being this mecca for anyone who wants to be involved with music. I mean, heck, again, to relate back to here in Eau Claire and that country station, one of my former coworkers went to Nashville to get involved in the music scene. 
actually twice, <laughs> this came to mind, another one did. And that's from up here in Eau Claire. They go down there. It's such a, so many, there's so much talent down there. I've never, I mean, I've only driven through the city once or twice, so I, I can't relate myself. But how do you make that particular connection to find these people and then to make them or to find the right chemistry, just get that right project? Because I, I can just tell from your reaction, you're glowing over how well it all worked out, but how do you find the right ones? Oh man, um, I mean, you certainly have a lot to choose from. Um, great musicians are not sparing here in Nashville. Um, I think, honestly, it's trial and error, I guess. Um, I really have Alan Thompson, another co-producer. Oh, actually, a Alan and Alex both to thank for those particular musicians. Um, being on this record they kind of like gave the idea to them and they were up for it um but honestly i guess a way you can find like the best chemistry with artists is um i know for me just being here for so long and these people sort of having a track record of being such great musicians definitely helped um but yeah, I think it's just a matter of dipping your toe in and seeing what you can find. How many performances, and this is kind of giving insight to anyone watching this and listening to this of, of performing in Nashville as an up and coming artist who, I mean, who's of, of all of them out there, there's so, so many. How many performances have you had how many gigs have you had and i don't expect you to have like a count at this point but how many gigs have you had since you started publicly performing around nashville and how frequently do you perform when when obviously it's safe to do so oh my god um this year or, or just in in general like uh, maybe i'll rephrase it this way like how frequently and again not counting you know COVID era because it's going to be different but on average like how frequently are you performing in nashville um, Pre-COVID, uh, every weekend, um, every weekend I'd have a show either in Nashville or around Nashville, and I'm, I was lucky enough to have been, you know, on a, on a few tours last year and had a few lined up before COVID, so pretty frequently. Um, actually, one thing, um, it's, it's bizarre playing in Nashville. Um, I think a lot of venues, and I don't want to like um, put anybody down or speak negatively about anybody, but I think a lot of venues kind of see it as um, them doing you a favor rather than the artist doing the venue a favor and bringing the people in. So it's it's quite hard playing in Nashville sometimes. Really? Um, is is there an area in like a kind of a, a scene a, a I don't know, a neighborhood, whatever, that seems to be a little bit more particularly artist friendly and not even necessarily like name businesses, but I mean, is there a certain spot? Like if someone were to go visit and see like, okay, this is where the creativity is really thriving and you get to see some really good artists. Where is it around there? That's maybe not getting a lot of national attention. Oh man. I'm always going to be such a supporter of, my neighborhood, East Nashville. Um, there's there's so many little great clubs that people don't know of. One in particular, the Five Spot, that's always so kind to their artists and they have so many great shows. They've actually been doing um, live streams now that COVID's happening. And I'm always, always gonna be such a great, like massive supporter of them. Good. How has that area adapted over this past, my gosh, now we're 10 months into the pandemic really hitting the United States. How have they held up thus far? And what's the prognosis looking forward before live music really gets going like it traditionally has been? Yeah, well, East Nashville has been under such a big change recently. In March, we actually had a factor Oh man, factor, it was pretty high factor tornado. Yes, yes, that's right. And tore down a lot of 
um, like really well-known businesses and buildings. Um, and I think it was super cool to see everybody come together as a community. Um, that being said, um, certain areas where the tornado was, um, things are getting rebuilt and it's, it's brought a lot of change. Um, I think it's too early to say whether it's positive or negative change, but all that I can say is that I couldn't be more proud of this area, how it's like come together and been so supportive during the last year. And Nashville actually had a, a bombing on Christmas day. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. So Nashville has been pretty, pretty targeted over the last year. So uh, it's just super positive to see people, um, you know, coming together and helping. By chance, were you in town when, when the bombing happened? I was, yeah, I was at home. Um, and I guess it took all of our cell service away. And wow. I, just, I was like, did I just not pay my phone bill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I was like, so confused why, like, you know, the Wi-Fi and cell service wasn't working. So Christmas Day was filled with lots of board games, and <laughs> card games, and things that do not involve Wi-Fi, which is nice. So it's good to know we can be adaptable as, as a society without technology if we need it to happen. True. What other artists have um, have inspired you over the past few years to for the songs on this particular collection? Oh, I always have such trouble with that question because I, <laughs> my music taste is nothing like the music that I create. Um, I actually am super into like uh, say indie pop um, or like indie music. I really, <laughs> my favorite artist in the world is the war on drugs. Um, I think Adam Granduce is such a genius, but um, I'd say what my record that I'm trying to be most like, I, I wouldn't necessarily say like I had this in mind while making the record, but um, some Americana artists that like, I really, really respect and their songwriting. Um, I really am a big fan of Brandy Carlisle. Um, I'm a huge fan of Sheryl Crow. Um, huge fan of Jason Isbell. I think Jason Isbell, I remember as we read, I think he's coming up here. We have uh, the Blue Ox Music Festival every June here in Eau Claire. And uh, I believe if I'm thinking right, I thought I could be completely wrong, but I think he was just announced as performing there this upcoming June, um, which was which was a good get. That's one of the bigger names out there. So, yeah, we're you know presuming we have outdoor concerts by then and all of that happens. Big asterisk on everything. That's right. something we're going to be looking forward to up, up here in Eau Claire. Yeah, I actually saw him. Um, we have down in um, Pelham, Tennessee, they're called The Caverns. It's like these super cool cave shows, but um, he actually did a show there like a couple months ago. Um, and it was it was actually like really fluid. There were of course like COVID guidelines um, and they had like little pods that you sat in. And I went with my cousin and they delivered drinks to you and merch to you and like had to wear a mask if you went up and went to the bathroom or something like that. So it's actually like really organized and he sounded fantastic. So it was super cool to be able to go to a show and see live music for sure. Oh, cool. Who would you like to collaborate with on any future project? Um, my dream would be the band Heim. Oh, um, yes. Three sisters, I think they are so talented. And every time I hear like, you know, new release of theirs or if they actually collaborate with a lot of different people. And every time I hear them, I get so excited. So that would be my absolute dream. Very nice. Well, maybe it's a possibility. You got to hopefully so. Hopefully this, this spreads around on that. That'd be, that'd be right. really cool to have happen. Um, any of the music of your father that has influenced you? Any, any, and I mean that not just in recorded or written output, but in his singing approach, his musical talent, which we know it, 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 it's, it's really good. What directly influenced you as an artist from him? I mean, yeah, he's, uh, 
everything he does is really inspirational. Um, I think we both have a very different songwriting approach. Um, uh, man, it's a tricky one. Um, he, he's a very like diligent and hardworking person. And I think that's very inspirational. What's your favorite song of his or favorite album of his? Um, I really like John Barleycorn Must Die by mm -hmm. Traffic. I really like the Traffic thing. Yeah, there was, a, there was actually a Traffic song and I'm blanking on the name of it, but I just heard it the other day driving back from the Twin Cities and or driving around the Twin Cities and I'd never heard it before and I had to be like, Nope, that's that's traffic era Steve Winwood because again his voice obviously changed as, as time went around. I'm like nope, that that's it. I I I really need to dive more into traffic. I've not heard too much traffic music. I've been familiar with the band for decades, never really got into it. I don't know why. And so I I think that's going to be one of my next focuses to get more more in into that. Um, you did the collaboration on Higher Love, obviously. W was there any other song in which you'd like to collaborate? with him just do do a performance do another do a rearrangement a reimagination of one of his works i haven't given it any thought thankfully there's a whole lot there to choose from if it, if it ever does come around so the album comes out in two weeks uh what's your plan after it gets released what's the, kind of the promotional plan to get the word around about this um so definitely a lot of live streams I don't have any um, particular dates right now. Um, just, yeah, um, like hopefully just getting it out there and, you know, play, play, play. And hopefully when live shows come around again, I'll be able to do those and really like actually in person get the songs out to people. Um, there's talks about shows in June right now, but I don't want to say anything. I don't want to like bring any bad juju or anything like that. So hopefully all we can do is wish, right? Right, yeah, we don't want to jinx anything, but maybe we'll be, maybe this will all work out. We can always hope for the best. And in the meantime, we have the recorded output. Time Well Spent is the name of the album, January 29th. We get to listen to it. Lily Winwood, thank you so much for taking a half hour to chat. Uh, with us today. This was a really fun chat and all the best going forward with the album release and your and your music. We'll look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Thank you so much, Luke. Have a good one. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.